coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. Marines order 800 instant eye systems. Raleigh, North Carolina Parks Committee reconsiders its drone proposal. And small unmanned aircraft prove worth in battlefield roles. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. Instant Eye Robotics has received a substantial order from PMA 263, the Navy and Marine Corps Small Tactical Unmanned Aircraft Systems Program Office, for an additional 800 Instant Eye Mark II Gen 3 A0 small UAS systems. The systems delivered under this contract will support deployed Marine infantry squads. We are excited that Instant Eye has been selected by the Marines as their squad level small UAS asset said Tom Vanek, Vice President of Instant Eye Robotics. We worked with the Navy and the Marines for some time as they tested and evaluated the system. Their early feedback helped refine the system and ultimately has made it a better product. The Instant Eye family of products includes the Mark II Gen 4, which is the largest, capable of carrying payloads up to four pounds. The mid-size, highly agile Mark II Gen 3, which can carry payloads up to 1.5 pounds, and the palm-size, highly integrated Mark II Gen 5, with advanced vehicle-borne computer processing power that will allow the system to adapt to future capability needs. All Instant Eye systems are all weather day and night systems that are affordable, rugged, and easy to operate. Additionally, all Instant Eye systems are capable of interfacing with external payloads that are attached based on mission needs. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. Fordham Technologies has introduced Drone Hunter, which autonomously patrols airspace and tows away any rogue drones from the sky. Using AI, the Drone Hunter system provides detection, monitoring, and capture of rogue drones over restricted airspace or no-fly zones. Once a rogue drone is detected and captured, Drone Hunter can tether and return or slightly discard to a predefined safe zone. Unmanned and unearthly, the sun rose on NASA's solar-powered Mars rover Opportunity for the 5,000th time in last week sending rays of energy to a golf cart-sized robotic-filled geologist that continues to provide revelations about the Red Planet. 5,000 souls after the start of the 90-soul mission, this amazing rover is still showing us surprises on Mars, said Opportunity Project Manager John Callis of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. According to a new market research report, Unmanned Aerial Vehicle Drones Market Global Forecast to 2023, the market is expected to grow from $17.82 billion in 2017 to $48.88 billion by 2023, at a compound annual growth rate of 18.32% during the forecast period. The growth of the UAV drone markets is driven by factors such as increase in venture funding, rise of demand for drone-generated data in commercial applications, and rapid technological advancements. General Atomics Aeronautical Systems Incorporated has announced its MQ-25 Stingray offering to the U.S. Navy in collaboration with a range of industry partners. GA ASI has designed a purpose-built MQ-25A Stingray, optimized for the tanking mission and providing exceptional fuel give, that will more than double the range of the carrier air wing. The offering reportedly exceeds all of the Navy's requirements, including carrier suitability. That was our Unmanned Minute, now back to the rest of the news. The Raleigh, North Carolina Parks Committee is looking at a revised drone policy that could allow small UAVs to be flown in almost all of the city's public parks. The new policy approved by the Raleigh Parks Committee and moved on to the Full Parks Recreation and Greenway Advisory Board would allow any UAV weighing less than 400 grams to be flown in any city park that is not designated as a nature preserve, nature park, wetland center, or lake. Larger drones would be limited to six parks and could be flown only in large open spaces. 
The first draft of the policy would have limited drone operations to seven parks, placed altitude restrictions on drones, and banned the use of cameras to capture imagery of private property. While drone supporters turned out in fairly large numbers for a discussion of the first draft of the policy, there were only a few in the audience this time around. The final draft of the drone policy sets out that drone racing is limited to aircraft weighing less than 1.7 pounds, including propellers, and drone race courses may not use trees as obstacles. Violators would be asked to leave the park or have their flying privileges revoked. The small drone aircraft the Army is using are proving their worth as a useful tool for battlefield reconnaissance and intelligence gathering. Infantry units are seeing the advantage of small unmanned aircraft systems, which are an integral part of the 1st Battalion, 4th Infantry Regiment, assigned to the Joint Multinational Readiness Center at the 7th Army Training Command's Hohenfels Training Area. Army Sergeant Christopher Curley, the small unmanned aircraft system's master trainer, assigned to Company B with the regiment's 1st Battalion, said drone aircraft can account for up to 60% of intelligence gathering during exercises. We typically can cover large areas of the box in rapid succession with our small unmanned aircraft systems teams, Curley said. The battalion is using three types of small drone aircraft, a commercial off-the-shelf quadcopter, an RQ-20 Puma unmanned aerial vehicle, and an RQ-11 Raven unmanned aerial vehicle. The quadcopter can be used in a variety of roles to replicate current and potential threats for purposes of the rotational unit's training here. Under perfect conditions, it offers short-range collection capabilities up to 4.3 miles. With a high-resolution camera sensor, it can carry a small payload of up to 3 pounds, about 6 tenths of a mile in distance. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week.